This is the second part of the outflanking video and in this video we're going to take a look at a couple of very important positions that involve outflanking in order to be able to use the game. So here with white to move, what white wants to do is gain the opposition with king to g4 and now black in order to be able to protect the pawn will have to retreat on the left side, let's say king to f6 and now as black left the g-file, white will be able to outflank him on the h-file. In other words, advance or make progress on the h-file. And from here, no matter what black does, white will be able to win black's pawn. If black retreats on f7, white will simply go to g5. And if black tries to hold on to the pawn, white will gain the opposition again and slowly win the pawn and then promote his e-pawn and win the game. In this position it's white to move and if you analyze this position a little bit I want you to notice that black is caged in he's not able to go attack white's pawn as the pawn on the a file attacks the square b4 and the, and the pawn on the c4 square attacks the square b5 making a wall for black not to be able to go and attack those pawns. But if white is trying to go after black spawn and attack him right away, he's not going to be able to make much progress because black will simply take the opposition again and protect those pawns. And if you're going to try to break through, black will simply maintain the opposition and white is not going to be able to make much progress. So if we go back from the beginning, how can white win this game? Well, the first step is to regain the opposition. Now, we will be able to do that simply coming to the square f5. The reason why we will be able to regain the opposition is that black cannot maintain the opposition. To maintain the opposition, would have to step on the square b5. Well, it's illegal to step on that square as the pawn on the c4 square attacks that square. So now black has to retreat and he only has two squares. No matter which one he chooses, white will be able to regain the opposition. If he goes on a6, white will be able to advance on e6, keeping an, an odd number of squares between them and gaining the opposition. And if black moves on b6 instead, white will be able to come to the square f6, keeping an odd number of squares between them. And now let's say black retreats coming up, white will maintain the opposition, an odd number of squares. And from here, no matter where black goes, white will be able to outflank him. If black is going to go up to b8, white will be able to outflank him, advance going down. And if black is going to come and protect the pawn, white will be able to regain the opposition. And now all black has to hold on to the pawn is the square b6. However, white will outflank him again. You could see here black moved down, white will advance or make progress moving up, outflanking him again. And here black will not be able to protect the pawns anymore. If he moves to the square a7, white will move down to c7 and now black cannot protect the pawn anymore and white will be able to gain both of the pawns and win the game. And if black instead of going to a7 will go to a6, white will simply attack the c6 pawn again and black cannot come and defend it because it's illegal for him to step on the square b5 and again white will be able to win the pawns and win the game from here. Well, flanking is also very beneficial in positions where there are two separated pawns by one file and the opponent has a pawn between those two separated pawns. Right here in this position it's white to move and white will be able to win this game. The reason why white will be able to win this game is that he will be able to regain the opposition. After white moves to d7 and black is trying to maintain the opposition, white now is able to move to the square d6. Well, black is not able to maintain the opposition anymore as his pawn is in the way and he will have to retreat either to f7 or to f6. If he goes to f6, white will be able to gain the opposition on e6. And if black will step on g7 instead, white will be able to gain the opposition on e7. And now black will have to move to g6 to hold on to the pawn. And here is where white can use all flanking. As you could see, white had the opposition and black moved down, white will advance going up on the other uh, rank. And here is a critical position. 
black will be able to win white's pawn in two moves and white will be able to win black pawn in two moves as well it is black to move that means black will take the white pawn first and then white will take the black pawn well now the other pawn is separated by one file and after black will win the pawn and attack the white pawn that white pawn will simply move up one square where white will be able to protect it let's see this in play so here black will come to g5 white will come to f7 black will take the pawn on g4 and white will take the pawn on f6 and after black attacks the pawn on the e-file the pawn on the e-file simply moves up one square as the white king is there to protect it and there's nothing that black can do now to stop that pawn from uh, becoming a queen coming back from the beginning i do want to mention that this position would have been a draw if black's king would have been on h8 and instead of f8 just because white would not be able to regain the opposition as black will maintain distant opposition if you are defending here and your opponent has two pawns separated by one file and your pawn is in between but if those pawns are a bishop and a rook pawn then this game can be drawn the drawing procedure you need to make sure that you move here to the bishop's file to c2 if you move to the rook's file on a2 you will lose this game because black will simply push the a4 pawn and now you will have to take as black will be able to take it and hold on to both pawns and after you take black will be able to take your pawn also gaining the opposition and from here the game will simply be won by black as he will be able to promote the pawn coming back to the beginning after you move the king to c2 now black has three options he could move the pawn on c4 forward he could move the pawn on a4 forward or he could advance with the king on a3 let's take a look at each of those one by one if he pushes the pawn on a4 we will simply take that pawn and after he takes the pawn back we will be able to come to the square c3 not allowing him to get access to the critical squares in front of the pawn and we will be able to get a draw if he comes and defends the pawn we'll take the opposition and we know that this position is drawn if he pushes the pawn on the c file we will be able to win it and, and after he takes the pawn he's left with the rook pawn and we know that we simply have to run into the corner and then we will be able to get a draw this way and last scenario if the king moves on a3 we will be able to get the opposition and from here black will have to attack the pawn or move the king to a2 if he moves the king to a2 we will be able to simply maintain the opposition and he's not going to be able to make progress and if he's going to push the pawn on the c file we will simply take that pawn and now black will have to go and stop the pawn from queening and in the meantime we will be able to go after his pawn and get a draw this way Pushing the rook pawn here doesn't help as we will be able to take it and after black takes it we will be able to gain the opposition and then also win the last pawn that black has. In this last position white gained the opposition by pushing the pawn from b3 to b4 and now black retreated going on e5. Here all flanking can be used again. You could see black left the d file going on the right side. White will be able to advance on the left side. What white will do will simply push the pawn on c4. If black takes the pawn, white will be able to win the pawn back out flanking black and now black cannot stop white from reaching the critical square a6 one square above the pawn and then also winning the game if after moving the pawn to c4 black does not take the pawn white is still gonna win if black retreats let's say to d6 simply by pushing the pawn to c5 with we'll check and after black gets the opposition white will be able to make progress going around the pawns moving to e3 he doesn't have to be afraid of black going after the pawn on b4 because the pawn on the c file will be a queen in three moves and black will not have time to stop white from winning
Therefore, Black's best plan here is to try and maintain the opposition. However, he's not going to be able to maintain that forever because after we move the king to g3, Black will not be able to maintain the opposition here as he will get outside of the square of the pawn. For example, if he moves the king here to g5, White will simply push to c6 and now Black cannot stop that pawn from queening. Therefore, Black's best move here is king to e5. But now white will be able to make progress by moving the king to g4. If black is going to try to hold him off going to e6, white will come to f4 again. Black can gain the opposition, however, white will move towards the pawn and now black will not be able to maintain the opposition as it's illegal to move on d6. He will have to move backwards to e7 and now white will be able to make progress. After he moves to d5, let's say black takes the opposition, white can push the pawn and king to c7, white's king to c5, and now white will be able to win black pawn and win the game from here. Okay, thank you for watching. Hopefully you will be able to apply the concept of outflanking in your games. And I encourage you to subscribe if you like my videos and check out my website masterchess.com where you will find a lot more positions that you will be able to practice this concept of outflanking and much more.